I'm going to try shell casting this. I'm just using standard old plaster of Paris, like this DAP stuff, for the first coat. And then I think I may end up trying the second coat with like drywall mud or something like that. I don't know. But the plaster of Paris does give a pretty nice initial coat. So here's my completed mold. And what I'm going to do is mix up a whole bunch of plaster of Paris. And then I'm just going to sort of spoon it on the outside and make myself a shell. When I've done this in the past, I've put this down in a mold and then I've poured the plaster of Paris in on top of it. And the issue with that is that in areas like this, it doesn't always fill because there's an air bubble there. That's why I'm going to try coating this with a spoon or something like that and getting material in everywhere. And then once I've got it pretty much covered, then I'll go ahead and fill in a whole bunch more around the outside. I kind of made a mess trying to pour some of the plaster of Paris. So now I've got little bits of plaster of Paris all over everything, but that doesn't really matter. So let's see how this goes. I've never done this before. I am kind of dubious because this is a lot more liquidy than I remember this being in the past. Um, maybe this is too thin a mixture. I don't know. So away we go. Kind of lumpy. I didn't mix this well enough. Usually I use a uh, drill and a uh, drill driven um, mixing wire of some sort. But this is an experiment. Kind of like frosting, really. And this is what shell casting is supposed to look like, basically. I mean, they do it with uh, dipping, and I could do that as well, I suppose. But all I've got to do is make sure everything's covered with a reasonably thick layer, and then I let it dry for a while. And since I'm going to be probably pouring this all in, well, okay, let me put it this way. I'm going to build a mold out of some cardboard or something, I don't know, and then pour a whole bunch more plaster Paris in on top of this whole thing. That will probably handle all of the issues I may face with not having all of the holes filled. By the way, I have some casting holes in this. It's not actually a good idea. You should probably mill all your holes afterwards, like the one I just covered or this guy right here, because things just change shape enough in the process of cooling down because of the thermal constriction of the, uh, of the aluminum that you end up with sometimes having hot tears in your mold because the mold um, fractures around a piece of plaster of Paris or whatever your refractory that you're using is. I'm doing this on wax paper, by the way, so that it won't stick too much. I hope that's a good idea. We'll find out. Um, anyway, so yeah, my idea of having all these holes in here probably wasn't great. And if they don't cast all the way through, then I just mill them when I'm all finished, which I end up doing anyway, because this isn't exactly near net it's kind of close but i have to finish the faces on the mill anyway so that they're going to seal against the uh against the air pressure of the uh intake manifold so this whole thing's going to have a whole bunch of machining anyway if i have to put some holes in it well that's fine too i guess i guess i made about the right amount of this stuff i hope this works it'd be really cool this would be a lot more a lot less wasteful. Previous casts have been super wasteful of Plaster of Paris. And that's not, I mean, Plaster of Paris is pretty cheap, right? But still, if I can get away with not wasting quite so much, that'd be nice. So now I have to run some more down in here into these big holes, which I do have to cast in place. That's kind of the whole point of this thing, because if I don't cast these guys in, um, Having to do a core for a double reentrant shape like this is just a pain in the neck. 
Um, I couldn't even really figure out how to do it, honestly. Since then, I have figured out how to do it by watching other people who are really good at sandcasting. Um, I'm not, so I'm going to try this. There's a big area in here that hasn't yet gotten any, and that looks pretty good. It looks like I've got almost 100% coverage. Now I do have 100% coverage down on the insides of all the holes, on the undersides of all of these overhangs that previously were going to give me troubles and this is beginning to set up it's just beginning to go um putty like rather than liquidy and so it's probably going to stop dripping in a moment and it'll be ready to uh do the first set and i think that looks reasonably good slop a little bit more on here and then i'm going to go clean up all of my mixing equipment so that I can run this again tomorrow. And one more bit over here. Looks like I did just exactly the right amount of um, refractory. Where by refractory I mean just merely plaster of Paris, but who cares? It'll work. Hopefully it won't fall over. Okay, next day. I've let this dry for 24 hours and I have a sort of lame mold that I built out of a piece of cardboard that I'm going to use. So first I have to pour a little bit at the top and refill in these holes. And then once I have that done, I'm going to just pour over this whole thing to see if I can get a nice top. So like just in here needs a little bit so that it'll fill correctly and have a nice solid um, surface in there. I just kind of taped onto the tops of these risers to get enough material so that they'd kind of seal. At this point, it almost doesn't matter, really. So we just slop some stuff on there. And then hopefully that'll stay in there. If it doesn't, it doesn't actually matter all that much because we've already got complete coverage. So we turn this over, put it down, and fill in the rest of it. It does help if you've got like popsicle sticks or something like that to walk this down in here. It would help even more if I vacuumed this, but honestly, it doesn't matter that much. I have got a surface layer that doesn't have any bubbles or has very few bubbles over the entire thing already, over the entire surface already. So this is just me dumping stuff on to get the rest of the mold filled and covered so that it will um, burn out well. And even that doesn't matter because the whole thing is gonna go into sand and that is actually going to provide a lot of the aluminum retention for this whole project when it's done. As in, I bury this thing in sand so that it will, some more there, it will retain the aluminum from flowing all over the place and sometimes when i'm in the process of doing this the uh the shell mold kind of cracks and as it turns out that's okay too because the uh, sand holds it all together it prevents anything getting out or at least from getting very far and yeah it does a really good job so i need to add some more to the top here to make sure this is sufficiently tough and at this point this mold is pretty much done um so now i'm going to scrape out the bucket and the rest of it just goes in the bottom kind of in and around what i've already got and then i'm going to try and uh, stack it up a little bit around the two riser heads so that they will have something around them. Again, it honestly doesn't matter because you can always fill it in with sand. That's assuming that you have a whole lot of sand, but it's a really good idea to pour in, around, or over sand because almost anything else you choose is gonna either burst into flame or explode or do something really violent because of hot aluminum getting on it. And somehow 
how the lumen always gets out. I mean, it's like water, right? You know, the water, uh, when you're trying to seal something, water will almost always manage to figure out if you've got any holes in it. Aluminum's exactly the same. It's fairly low viscosity when it's hot. And boy, I'll tell you what, it is really super exciting when you have uh, an aluminum leak. I'm just trying to work around the bottoms of these guys. I'm not going to get them all, but that's fine. As I said, they don't actually need it that much. And because it's really hot today, my plaster of Paris is already setting pretty solidly. So I'm probably just going to have to be content with what I've already got. And that's okay because what I've already got is going to do just fine. So that's got a whole bunch of liquid in it still. I didn't even need my little cardboard mold that I built. This thing's going to be solid all by itself. Let's see if I can get some in over here. And if I can get just a little bit more off the back of this where the sprue is and doesn't actually need to have as much as it does. I'll try and smoosh this over here. And a little bit more on the back of the spoon. Smoosh it in here. And let's see how that looks. Eh. I bet that'll work. Who knows? I might make a third run and just coat this whole thing with a third run. But... Honestly, maybe I won't too. This looks pretty good. 